I don't give a fuck about the past Our glory days gone by All I care about right now Is that we mole inside your thigh Just an emo dead stuff collector Things come to the brain Spent 17 pounds on mushrooms for you Cause I'm stopping by um i actually did this entire video a different time and i was watching it back to finish it up and i'm like it's i'm looking all over the place i'm never looking i'm never looking anywhere near the frame i'm looking looking all over the place anyway um welcome in i'm going to try and do a douche episode um if you did not or have not seen the previous douche episode to this one, I strongly recommend that you stop and go and do that. That one is much funnier. Um, it's shorter, probably. I'm not sure. Um, it's funnier too. I think so. I think the jokes are better there. This one is. This one is pretty lame. Um, if you do decide to stick around for it, though, um, you have one of these. This is Hazing, Arizona. This is from Walter Station Brewery out of Phoenix. You can see this is the, um, an homage to the Coen Brothers film Raising Arizona. I'm going to tell you another thing, um, because I had just done the other one. I'm way further along on the race in Arizona <laughs> than I need to be. If you know what I'm saying. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll through some records. These are all albums that came out in 2021. All but one of them are new albums. One of them is a reissue of an album that originally came out in the year 2000. The rest are mostly albums that came out in the first half of 2021. Did I mention that the Hazing Arizona is a hazy IPA? It's important to know. Triple dry hopped, citrus forward. Mm -hmm. um, if you need something to, to munch on, as usual, you know, where you can go and grab a, grab a couple nuts to put in your mouth, if that's, if that's what you're into. So I'm going to try and just get through these again. <laughs> uh, this first one, this is an album from a band out of Scotland, Glasgow, called Arab Strap. The album is As Days Get Dark. This is their seventh LP, their first release in 16 years. Came out on rock action, I think in the in the first half of this year. I feel like the vinyl was delayed as with so many other um, vinyl releases. So I believe, as I recall, when Arab Strat came on the scene in the kind of in the late '90s, um, it was around the time of Bell and Sebastian's third record, which was named "The Boy with the Arab Strap," um, which was named after the band Eric Strap, uh, and supposedly they did not know that that was a, you know, a sex toy, some sort of a sex toy designed to help you hold an erection, like a cock ring, I believe. You probably know better than I do. Um, anyway, that is around the time, I believe that they were, you know, obviously they were around before then, but in the, in the United States, I don't know that any, many, very many people knew who Arab Strap was before then. 
I guess that's my story for you about that. Um, so, so this one, this is has really excellent, um, grim lyrics. Very often in the trademark spoken word, like talky style, almost like storytelling style with the thick Scottish accent. There is some singing. Um, carrying on from the, the albums that came after, like in the post year 2000, where they started to incorporate more and more electronic elements. This carries on with that, uh, whereas others have more of an indie rock feel. And then other songs like Bluebird that come to mind that are like more minimal, almost harkening back to the earlier albums. Self, you know, self-deprecating. Um, center sleeve. It's always fun to hear like you know, people with with thick accents say fuck. That happens. Insert this out of the download code. I actually use the download code here, so I can't, I can't give that to you this time. And this is on um, like clear and black vinyl. I'm actually, I, I'm going to show you this. And I'll say this, I would say that this is possibly it's among their best albums if it isn't their best album. It's that, it's really good. If you're, if you were a fan at any point of Arab Strap, this album is definitely worth checking out. Says he can make the night sing And he's got just the very thing it takes you by the nose and you sniff his sin Takes you in the mouth on his knees by the bends And then he's straight back to the bar Just take a sip, just take a hit You can't refuse the fuses there. It's not a game you win but This one, um, this is uh, another 2021 release, debut LP. The band is called Dry Cleaning. The album is New Long Leg. It's on 4AD Records. I got this whenever, around the time it came out, I believe in the probably mid-spring. And I just wasn't, um, I, I wasn't in the mood for it then. And I feel like it's because it is another London post-punk band um, and I just um, you know I just wasn't in there's been so many of these bands <laughs> I just wasn't in the mood at the time this is a court or a, yeah a quartet um, album is produced by John Parrish who is most well known for producing and working with PJ Harvey Alvis Harding many others in fact another album later on, Unplanned, also produced by John Parrish. Um, so coming back to this, once I'm in the, was, found myself back in the mood for this, this kind of music. Um, I find this to be very, very good. The, the music, like the instrumentation is in a very 80s post-punk sound with kind of the kind of female again like spoken like talky vocals um the singer her name is Florence Shaw like she really is what elevates this I, to me her vocals elevate this to the next level she has a like really dry droll delivery and it, the lyrics almost seem like a, like, it's like a word salad. But when you listen to it with repeated listening, 
that word salad is actually a lot deeper than, than it may first appear. But I find the, I, I found it very entertaining even without like thinking about the words. It's just, um, it's just very interesting, the, 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 the style and the, the content. Um, I would say I'm more into the first side of this album than I am the second side, but the second side is also, it's also very good. It's very good overall. Show you what we got here. This is uh, there's like a, it's like an insert that has all those words for people that know how to read. And has like a printed in seat, looks like that. Why don't you want oven chips now? It's a Tokyo bouncy ball, it's an Oslo bouncy ball, it's a Rio de Janeiro bouncy ball. Filter, I love these mighty oaks, don't you? Do everything and feel nothing, wristband, theme park, scratch card, lanyard. Alright, next up, this is the third LP for the, like, you could call this like an indie pop super group, I guess. Um, there's Studio LP, again, 2021 release. This is artist called The Catenary Wires. Berlin Gap is the album. So this is, it's a five piece, but it, you know, it originally was just Amelia Fletcher and Rob Percy from Tallulah Gosh, Heavenly, Marine Research, the Swansea Sound. Um, kind of a, has a mature indie pop sound with varying styles. Um, I saw somewhere written the first song the, the the lead track face on the rail line someone compared it to the charlatans north country boy and when you hear it like it has that feel it doesn't sound like it's the charlatan the whole thing none of this sounds like the charlatans but the um the feeling of that of that first track face on the on the rail line it does have the same like feel of, of that charlatans track then you have like songs like Mirror Ball, which is a little bit upbeat, dancey. Um, Canterbury Lanes is more like of a like almost progressive folk sound. So you know, dueling male female vocals that I really like. Um, great harmonies, hooks. This is on. Uh, it's on white vinyl. It's not a lot of like un unplanned themes. Face in reflection speeds along, speeds along. Loss of connection. third LP. This one is out of Brisbane. Is it Brisbane or Brisbane? Australia. Um, this is a group called The Goon Sax. And the album is Mirror 2. This is on, um, on Matador Records. Um, 
possibly, I mean, not possibly, it's notable that um, Robert Forster's son, Louis Forster, is in this band. Uh, Robert Forster from the Go-Betweens, his son, is in this band, the Goon Sax. Um, this was also, again, produced by John Parrish, who I just mentioned, produced from producing the dry cleaning album. Um, this has an indie pop, but more 80s post-punk new wave, almost some like goth pop feel. Very 80s glossy kind of sound. A fair amount of the vocals here are also like in the talky, like spoken, spoken, spoken word type style. Um, again, male, female vocals. It is a bit of a departure. This is also a die cut sleeve. It's a bit of a departure from their first two albums that I think some, some um, longtime fans may not like. There's the, there's the words. It did take me, take me a little bit. To, I actually, strangely enough, this is not, this is fairly recent that this was released, but I got it, got it used for like half of what it costs. Nonetheless, I had to listen to it a few times to really kind of get into this one again because of the kind of the change in style little bit. I mean, it's not crazy, but a little bit. And this one is also kind of, kind of a white wax color. dream pop duo, a husband and wife combo. So again, male, female. Um, yeah, so it's, it's dream pop, dream pop from Charleston, South Carolina. The group is called Tape Waves. Album is called Bright. I think this is their fourth LP. This is on Emotional Response, which is a label run by now I'm not going to remember his name. The, the guy from the band Boy Racer. Um, it's mostly laid back, breezy, dream pop um, with with some jangly, jangly guitars. There's one or two tracks that are a little more, uh, a little more driving. Um, the female vocals oftentimes are very like whispered or wispy. Definitely, if you're into that, like that style, that dream pop, especially dream pop with like female vocals, definitely worth checking out. Tape waves, bright. Here's the insert with the words. <laughs> and it's on a, what is this? This turquoise, bluish turquoise, it looks more like turquoise to me than it does in the camera, I think. talk about uh, the, the recent release by Teenage Fan Club called Endless Arcade. This is their 11th studio LP. This is the first without Gerard Love, Jerry Love, um, and their first with Euros Childs from, and this is the, it's the first one with him as a full-time member. I will say he's from the band Gorky's. I want to know how to say this. 
I think that it's Gorky Zygotic Monkey or Mincy. It's one or the other. Um, if you know, let me know. I saw them. Gorky Zygotic Monkey <laughs> in 2003, I think. Anyway, um, I got derailed there. So a pretty significant lineup change with, with, with Jerry Love out of the picture, who was, you know, a, a song, one of the key songwriters, there is nobody takes their place. So it's, it's still, um, so you're left with two instead of three. You got Norman Blake and Raymond McGinley, um, doing the songwriting principally. This was recorded in 2019 in Hamburg, Germany. The release was delayed until earlier 2021. It was supposed to come out in 2020. I don't know what happened in 2020 that, that, that caused this not to be released then, but you know, they'll go down in the annals of history, I guess. Here's the printed inner sleeve. So this has a similar sound, I would say, to most of the post-creation output, most creation post-creation records output of Teenage Fan Club. Um, and more specifically, just the last few albums have, they have a very similar, mature, accomplished pop, you know, guitar pop sound with a lot of 70s classic rock influences intertwined. Let's say even here, the first track on, on this album called Home has a, like, almost like, there's almost like a part where they're like just jamming, um, which is kind of unusual. So it has a looser, you know, looser feeling. I am a, I'm a fairly big sucker for for this this not only this style of music but it, but definitely a teenage fan club like just just the harmonies kind of you know warm me up but it's hard for me to because of that it's kind of hard for me to like know if i'm able to see the forest for the trees like i don't um i don't think that somebody's gonna like necessarily like this if they didn't like you know the last several Teenage Fan Club, right? If they listened to those, didn't like them, I don't know why this would make any difference. Um, I, to me, this isn't a significant drop off from anything else. Um, would it have been better with if the, without the lineup changing? It's possible. I guess I, I guess we won't know. Um, I think this is a good record for for. If you like this kind of thing, for sure. Very good. Issue of an album that came out in the year 2000, the first time on vinyl. It's uh, the artist is the Mendoza line that I like quite a bit, and this album is called We're All On This Alone. This was originally released as a CD on Bar None Records. I don't believe it was released in any other format. It may have been released on cassette, but if it did, I'm, I'm sure that was trash. Um, I don't think it was, but if it was, just buy the CD for crying out loud. Um, This 
band, so if you don't know, I guess let's go with that first. The Mendoza Line, they formed in the mid 90s, I think in 95, 96, in Athens, Georgia. I think that they were trying to get the attention of, you know, Elephant Six Collective that was active in Athens at the time. They wound up releasing three CDs and some seven inches, but the th the th they released three CDs on Kindercore Records out of Athens, Georgia. The first, and I, again, I, poem, I think Poems to a Pawn Shop or Poem to a Pawn Shop, could be dead wrong, I might put that up here. Um, that was their debut album. And I would say, I like that at the time that it came out. I do not think that it really stands up over time. Then they had an EP, I think that was called Like Someone in Love, which was very good and, and kind of a began a shift in sound. Then in 99, the album I Like You When You're Not Around, kind of precursor to this, where the, the lineup was changing, the sound was changing, there was some country alt country if you want to say that elements that were that were coming into play with the indie pop more indie pop sound so then this one came out in the year 2000 um this was a very highly regarded record like critically acclaimed record when it came out but i don't think it sold at all very limited um this uh Vinyl reissue, which I believe is the only full-length release of theirs that is available on vinyl. Like all of the original albums came out, I think, on CD only. Um, and it is the in the the original format, like it's the original 15 songs. Whereas there is a newer reissue of this album digitally that has bonus tracks. I may put one of the bonus tracks at the end of this video. Having not listened to this in a while, I would say that the first side, I find to be much stronger overall than the second side initially, but I, had, I listened to it a few times. It's still really strong. I don't know that I like it as much as I did in the year 2000, but it is still really strong. Like a lot of really good songs. The whole like kind of like theme of this, because there was really, I'm thinking there was a couple um, a couple of female singer songwriters that did originally wrote the entire album and then the male members kind of wrote songs rebutting those songs if I'm remembering correctly so there's kind of this again dueling male female vocal thing going on and it's almost like a battle of the sexes type thing kind of like different relationship um, issues or this or that written from the male or female points of view on different songs. Yeah. The song Baby I Know What You're Thinking is probably the most like immediate like catchy kind of tune that people, I don't know, people would know or not know. Did I already show this? I've been, I've been just yammering. Anyway, this is the Men Mendoza line. We're all in this alone.
I think that's gonna do it for this um, this douche episode. May come back before too long and try and get some some more of the more recent stuff, or I'll just maybe I'll just perpetually be behind and just and yeah, that might be better. <laughs> um, feel free to grab another one of these before you go. Appreciate you stopping out. Um, thanks. <laughs>